This is the second year that um, Hideo and I have been doing this talk. This is sort of a continuation of last year. Uh, and last year it was, uh, I've spent so much time with him over the last uh, couple years and we've become friends, which is crazy because he's a legend to me. Uh, but a big part of it was me sort of trying to show all of you the way his brain works. And, and last year was very much about influence uh, and the way he's influenced via cinema and the way his cinematic brain works. And this year, the follow-up to this conversation is going to be much more skewed towards process and how he specifically goes about it. Uh, so I'm excited all of you are here, and I will bring out the legend himself, Kojima-san. Woo! I've been spending an enormous amount of time with him um, for things that we will talk about at another day. Uh, but truly, he has one of the most interesting brains in the world, I think. Not only as a game designer, but just a, a consumer of media. Just content, um, science fiction, and everything. And he's an enormous dork, which is <laughs> always very nice. Um, but uh, eventually he'll come out on stage. Stretch it out, they say. <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing? Woo! <laughs> Did you guys see the Death Stranding trailer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when people ask me about the Death Stranding trailer, because I had seen it months ago, uh, no spoilers, but they were like, what's it like, what's it like? And I was like, well, it's great, because it's very Kojima-san, because people are going to watch it, and they're going to say, I still don't know what this game's about, <laughs> but I'm excited. <laughs> I think he's probably one of the few people on the planet who uh, has that ability and uh, can get people excited about a game on an R2 level. level. So once again... Kojima-san. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. As always, the trusty Ken to translate. Um, so like I said, last year was about influence. This year we've spent so much time together and I want to talk about process. Um, one of the things that you told me, I just took him to Super Potato, which is a very ner nerdy store, store in Tokyo. It says uh, old school games. And he picked up the Mario cartridge, the original Mario, and he said, without this game, I wouldn't be doing this. And he said, there's two simple buttons. There's, there's jump, basically. There's run and jump. So when you saw that, what made you think... I can be cinematic with this art film. えっとですね、ま、当時はその表現力が全然なかったので、カメラワークは当然使えません。え、キャラクター喋れません。So uh, back then all you had to uh, there were so, only so many things that you could express. Uh, you can change the camera, you can play with the camera work. すごい。なんでいわゆる映像で見せるというよりは、え、ゲームの画面でいかにドラマとか演出するかっていう、ま、テキストも含めてですけども、そういうことで、ま、映画ではないですけど、映画の手法ではない方法で、なんとかそのスト
that they would come so fast. So I knew that eventually the, those methods available to movies would be available for us, but I just didn't see it being happening so fast. であのまあ三十数年前にマリオに出会って、まあそこでゲームに出会ってゲームの可能性に出会って今の僕があります。So thirty some years ago, I had my first encounter with Mario, and、uh, well, that's what led to who I am today. で、えー、まあ昨日デストランディングの新しいトレーダーを公開しましたけど、まあ詳しいことはあまり言えませんけど、えー、マリオっていうのがやっぱりゲームの最初にあって、そのマリオがずっとやっぱり、えー、ゲーム業ゲーム業界とゲームの中でまあ深く根付いてるんですね。でゲームっていうのはマリオと一緒で。普通の人よりも速く走って高く飛んで、えー、空を飛んだりする、えー、すごく自分ができないことをゲームというあのバーチャルなところで超能力を発揮するそれを、えー、カタリストにするゲームが多いんですけども、えー、デス・ストランディングはその真逆を言ってます。So yesterday also I showed the... Uh, as a, a trailer for this running, I cannot go into, much, into too much detail about that. But、uh, Mario is at the basis of games, is、uh, you know, the basis for so many games where Mario tries to go faster, than, faster jump higher, and some games that you can fly, do whatever you want, have these unusual、uh, abilities, that, and through those,、uh, using, exploiting those abilities, give a catharsis to the player. Now, in this running, I'm trying to go for the opposite of this. あのデストのノーマンは、えー、小石につまずいてこけたりしますし、荷、so、物、えー、のバランスをで<笑>あの横に傾いたりしますし、川,川で流,れたり流されたりもするという、これもマリオがあってのことです。Uh, so with this running, Norman can trip into stones,、uh, needs to constantly be careful with his balance when walking,、uh, can be taken away by a river,、uh, and all these elements are there because of Mario. Uh, I just like to think about when, when we were in Tokyo, you said to me、um, that you originally wanted to be a director, and that sometimes you feel trapped, you felt trapped in the game industry. And then you said to me, but ultimately, you're so proud of the fact that you're working in a medium that didn't exist when you were born. And I thought that was really touching. And I just love to think about this kid who saw Mario and then thought, one day I'll make. An hour long unskippable cutscene. That kills my PS3. Yeah. I so, I killed, you can't kill my launch. The way your personal style has evolved cinematically and the way you tell stories from way back in the day making games to the MSX. To now, how would, how would you describe that evolution? MSX was a time when the game was a game that 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 the game was a game 排除されなければいけないのかっていうのも全く説明がなかったです。So back in MSX, for example, you had an enemy and you had to defeat the enemy. There was no way. That was the only thing. That was your role. You were never given a reason why you have to defeat that enemy. で、まあそこに僕はすごく疑問があって、でそこを説明したゲームを作りたいということなんですけども、つまりそれはゲームにドラマがなかったんですよ。キャラクターの意思とか動機とか。背景モチベーションが描かれてなかったのでそれを描こうとしました。So I and I had questions about that. I wanted to make a game that explained that, which in other words、uh, means that were, the games didn't have drama back then. And I wanted to add these dramatic elements, a will to the character, a motivation, a, a reason why a character is doing something. とえ当時のキャラクターは、えー、顔もなくてまあドットなんですけど。顔もなくて表情もなくて、えー、言葉も持たないそういう、えー、ハードだったので、えー、それが今や喋、えー、って表情も動きもその年齢も説明しなくていいんですねビジュアルで何,何歳ぐらいの人で性別も分かって大体どういう人種の人かも分かる服装とか、えー、持ってる時計とかイヤリングとか装備品でその人の背景が分かる
そのぐらいのディテールが描けるようになったので、えー、当初やりたかったことが今ようやくできるようになってきたという感じですでゲームをやっててよかったなと途中でやめずにやっててよかったなと思います So back then,、uh, characters had no face and expression. I mean, they were done, it was dot art, so、uh, they, didn't have, they didn't have words.、Uh, that was、uh, the hard part back then. Nowadays, though, the characters talk, they have their facial expressions, they have their own unique movements.、Uh, you know, you can convey all these things just visually without needing,、uh, any need to explain this、uh, what race they are, the clothes, what kind of accessories they wear, the equipment, all these details. Finally, now today we can. Made them in the games, and you know, looking back at that makes me feel really happy that I didn't leave the gaming industry before. I'm, I'm just happy to be here.、Um, I want to talk about the sort of hidden and invisible, in my assessment, Olympic sized backflips that you do with your cinematics. <laughs> and specifically, all of you should go back and watch not the most re recent Death Stranding trailer, but the last one. Or you should go and look at a lot of the, the cutscenes in Phantom Pain. Because he's gone from a world of very traditionally cinematic cut, angle, new angle, cut, to these very long, unbroken takes. And normally in cinema, you see a virtual camera, and it, and it reeks of being computer generated because it's doing these long, sweeping moves where it will zoom across the landscape in, in, in three seconds. It feels naturally CG. But you started doing something where you started taking that virtual camera and making it feel handheld. And so you would do these very long, unbroken takes, and they're, they're incredibly long, but they feel fluid and they feel authentic and they feel natural. And I think you were one of the first people doing that, and now you see things like God of War, and it's one continuous unbroken take throughout. You guys should go and watch those cutscenes. I want to talk about that process. How did that come to you? How do you block a scene? In the midst of that technique, to me, it's sort of a groundbreaking thing that hasn't even been done properly in film yet. It, it's a very new thing. So I just want to talk about where that came from. So, 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 first off, games is one,、uh, rely on one camera, the one camera that is following the player. あの 3D になってからですね。3D になる前は二次元なんでカメラじゃないです。フレームしかないで。紙芝居です。All that started in 3D.、Uh, back, back then, when it was only 2D, it was just,、uh, you know, there was no camera. But this concept of the camera started with 3D. The player's camera was just one of the players' games. The cut scene was just one of the players' games. The cut scene was just one of the players' games. The cut scene was just one of the players' games. The cut scene was just one of the players' games. The cut scene was just one of the players' games. The cut scene was just one of the players' games. So,、uh, the, the camera it, it, now, when we go into a 3D era, the camera is constantly following the player, or well, there are some games where the camera is from the, play,、uh, the player's perspective. However, you're playing, and then when it comes to、uh, the cutscene, then the camera has to change. This is、uh, inevitable because of technology, because back then the, it was pre render movies or animations, and it just took you out of there, and the camera changed. であのこれ皆さんあのちょっと誤解されてるんですけど普通ゲームシーンとカットシーンって同じところで作ってませんほぼ、えー、ほとんどがそうですねあのカットシーンは映画会社とか別のところに作ってもらってます演出をしてるのは別の人です Now, one... Uh, one thing that most people、uh, don't get right is that、uh, in most games, game scenes and cutscenes are made separately,、um, are made in different places.、Uh, for the most part, cutscenes are directed by someone else, by a, game,、uh, sorry, a filmmaking、uh, company. And I disagree with this,、uh, with this method. I think that whether it's in game camera or c u s t o m camera, the same person that is directing the game should be, should,、uh, should be directing this. The real goal is that the player's camera is one, but it's 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 one,
カットシーンはプレイを操作できないんですけども同じようにワンカメラで情報を追っていくでまたゲームにそのままのカメラでスッと入っていって、まあ、一つのカメラでオープニングからエンディングまでを捉えたものっていうのがゲームとしてはすごく理想的だと思いますでそれを、えーまあ、数年前からやってるだけですけど。Now, the deal is that... There's always only one camera following the player constantly,、uh, with the player、uh, controlling the character and then going into the cutscene, losing control of the, of the player, of the character, but still smoothly going from cutscene to、uh, in game and vice versa, from one camera、uh, going back into the, in, in, in the game with the same camera. So, ideally, you have just one, this one camera from the opening of the game to the ending of the game. Uh, well, I've just been trying to do this over these last years. まあ、映画ではそのヒチコクのロープとか、えー、トゥモローワールドとかは先駆けてあのキュアロンやってましたけど、あのフィルムインダストリー、あのヒチコクワンカメのショット、people that have been trying to do the same thing、uh, with ヒチコクのロープ or アフォンスポロー that have been trying to do this、there are people that have まあある種だからこれも映画の手法の一つだと思います。So I think well this is、uh, in a way this is another methodology for でこれを作るのが非常に、まあ、冗談も分かっていると思います非常に大変なんですよ。Sure、this, doing, this, これ絵コンテで描いてもうまくいかないです。そういう意味ではブロッキングというかそのキャラクターの配置とここでこの情報を出していく、このカメラでこれを見せて、ピン送りでっていうのは、そのそう計算して作らないといけないんで、非常に緻密にしないといけません。You have to,、uh, to calculate in a lot of detail all, all these things to be able to execute it, execute it. even then it's difficult. まあアクションシーンとかはワンショットで撮るようなもんですよね。さっき終わらずに。It's like trying to take an action scene all to, in one cut all together. で大体まああの冗談もしてるんですけど、この人形さんとか、えー、マップで。So, well, you, Jordan, you're familiar to this, but you first start with、uh, putting a, playing with dolls and putting it in a, in a map and defining the positions where each, everything will be. So, you can see that you can do it. 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 And now, once you have this layout with the dolls, then you start doing it yourself.、Uh, in our case, we, we, get, we get staff members, and all right, you, you will play this character, or、right, this will be over here, and we try to shoot that with a camera ourselves. And once that is done, then We, do, we try to do a previous v i s u a l i z a t i o n with computer graphics, putting that in the computer,、uh, starting to calculate, all right, we need this in the background, we need this element, here we need to add this or that or subtract this. Then, so you want to set to the performance capture, then you go to the higher side, you have to go to the A and B, the speed of the car, and you have to go to the other side, and you have to go to the other side, and you have to go to the other side, and you have to go to the o t h So, and using that, then you go on set,、uh, you start do, you're doing the performance capture, you have the actors, and depending on the actors, they move at different speeds, not what you calculated, because each person moves at a different speed, so you adjust based on that. And then, with,、uh, once that, all that is done, that's the way, the way you get into getting these long scenes in on one cut. まあ、そういうやり方なので、えー、キャメロンがターミネーター2で陽光炉のシーンでやったと同じように模型をさっき作ってカメラを決めてしまうとこっち側は作らなくていいので、えー、カメラの動きと俳優の動きとセットの、えー、レイアウトが決まると映らないところはあのカットシーンに関してはディテールは必要ないのでそこはすごく効率がいいです。And well, the, in, in this regard, the method that James Cameron uses, you know, having a, a, a maquette of, of everything, having the camera, the sets, the layouts,、uh, that allows you to have you,、uh, a lot of details beforehand, and that makes the process a lot、uh, more effective.、Uh, I really can't、uh, express how difficult what he's talking about is. It, it, it essentially is a ballet. Like, In a normal scene, you can cut away to what you want. You can be on this person, then you can cut to a reverse, you can introduce something. The way that his cutscenes have been working lately, it, it goes from the, the in game 
the gameplay, it latches onto the character, it develops around, it finds someone new, it travels a distance, finds something else, comes back, and all in one continuous, unbroken thing, which becomes this incredibly complicated thing. Block is is difficult to begin with. What he's talking about is even more difficult. And to me, it's so fascinating looking at the evolution of how you made people feel something cinematic in the original Metal Gear. Snatcher and Least Knots created a much more filled and full world cinematically. And then you go into like proper sort of traditional Hollywood cinema in the original Metal Gear. And now the most cinematic version of that is actually these unbroken shots that sort of fuse the gameplay and the game. It really is masterful stuff. Um, but specifically, when you're moving that camera around, like you, you told me, I brought up the, the gecko scene uh, in Metal Gear 4 with Raiden, which is a masterful, it's, a, it's an incredible action sequence that I think goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with any contemporary action scene in existence. You told me you were taking dolls and you were moving them around to block out that whole thing. Normally that would go to a second unit director, that would go to another team. I'm proud of the fact that my action is something that I'm super hands-on with. Talk to me about taking those dolls and choreographing that whole insane ballet. そうですあの特にダイデンとゲッコが戦うところはもうあの人間ではできないんで人形でスタントの人と何度も打ち合わせしてこ,ここでこうしたくぐってこうしてあってっていうのは何度もやりました。Yeah, especially that scene, uh, that battle scene of the Geckos and Raiden, uh, there are movements impossible to achieve for people, so we were doing it endlessly with the dolls, talking with people, alright, this goes there, and uh, we're going to try to do this, uh, it, it took a lot, quite a bit of time. One shot to do it, it's good, but the speed is not going to be able to do it. So it's a very difficult place. Uh, it's, I like to do things in one shot, but unfortunately what do you, the downside of doing this is that that uh, feeling of speed is, gets lost. If you go from here to there and you're just dolling it that way, you know, it's, it's not interesting. あの天井を映すとかあるいはブレードランナーでリドリー・スコットがやったレイチェルが歩いてくるところを途中であのライトで影にして一回見えなくしてパッと出すとかそこは非常にこう頭を使うところですけどここが非常に面白いところです。That's where you have you really have to use your brain. Uh, I don't know uh, panning at the audience in between or showing something interesting. That's something that uh, Ridley Scott, for example, did masterfully in a Rachel and that scene where she's getting close and the lights go off and then she's closer. You know, you, you gotta put this kind of ideas and uh, it's very difficult, but that's also what I, found it, I find interesting and fun to think about. Uh, now, there's another reason that uh, I, I did this for cutscenes. あの、階段を上がってステージに上がるところもカットされません。普通映画ではそのそれは気に入るとこなんかカットなんですけど、ゲームはそこも自分で歩いていきます。あ、インインデゲームズ、ユーブオンヨーコールタイムラインタイムイ
Now in my games, I, I, uh, the way I try to do it is, instead of like in a cutscene, when a, a, a character goes into a restaurant, instead of just shifting from getting to a restaurant and already eating, I do the whole pro I, I describe the whole thing where uh, the character goes into the restaurant, sits in, looks at the menu, just to try not to disrupt the game, the rhythm of the, of the player that, that the game is following. But where did that idea come to you? By the way, if you just want an image in your head, every time I go to Kojima Productions, it's just him playing with dolls. <laughs> but, uh, where did that idea come to you? Because normally with 3D cameras, normally with virtual cameras, it's this smooth movement, it's rapid movement, and that's what gives it a feel of being computer generated. Your work was some of the first time I was seeing those continuous moves, but done in the handheld style. So if I'm going from here to there, it's done with the rockiness of handheld, and it's not moving beyond the rate of a human. And so it feels more natural, but it's still doing impossible camera moves. So where did that idea come to? So, uh, well, the, the idea, I mean, I have all these images of the game in my mind. 